Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Dragon Quest Builders 2 video sponsored by Square Enix. I told you guys that I really like this game. I put it in my top 30 survival games of last year and I've got an opportunity to show off some proper gameplay as it's now available on Games Pass and of course it's still available on Steam and other platforms too. I showed you guys how to get your farm upgraded after the tutorial to level 2 and now we're going to go for level 3 which is quite an undertaking. I'm going to show you growing and pretty much farming in this one. So make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe for the best in survival games, news, guides and opinion and let's go through some top tips as well as making a bathhouse in Dragon Quest Builders. 2. So we get even more Thorofieldians join us, it starts to make our lives a lot easier. Eventually these guys will start actually planting seeds for you as long as you leave them in a chest nearby and I'm going to show you that guys too. Now something I didn't really touch on in my first tips guide in getting you to base level 2 is customising your farm. You can add, you can build, you can do all sorts of little buildings but really this is still kind of tutorial stage. I would suggest that you just kind of race through the objectives as quickly as you can and don't focus too much on exploring all of these worlds. You can come back at any time to go and get certain resources and you can come back and just spend all your time on this island if you really want to build but you will unlock a bunch more new items and buildables if you quickly get through the game as pretty much fast as possible. The actual creative mode where you get a chance just free build with everything unlocked is obviously at the end of the story and it does take quite a while. So basically don't dawdle around, try and get the pastor's missions completed as fast as possible and level up your farm as quickly as possible. So I showed you guys how to get to level 2 and now we're going to focus on getting up to level 3. Now this is quite a big task, you're going to be going to all sorts of locations, getting resources and as I said I'm going to show you guys how you can get your farm fieldians to help you start planting some of these seeds directly. We're also going to unlock the bottomless pot and I'm going to show you guys how to build a bathhouse to keep your NPC characters happy and giving you that all important gratification points. So almost immediately after levelling up and you've seen what's happened with the deity tree, you're going to have a big wave of enemies coming in and all of your villagers are going to be needed to take them on. It's fairly simple and easy as long as you've made sure you've given every one of your NPCs that can hold a weapon a brand new sword, it should make things a lot easier. These smaller ones aren't really an issue. Next up though is a bunch of bad boons and these can be a little bit more challenging with their rage and forward hurl. I do believe you do more damage if you can get behind them and obviously make sure you're using a sword and not your paddle that I've accidentally been using here. The third wave is a bunch of smaller skeletons and again they shouldn't be too much as long as you can try and dodge out of their little tax or even let your guys go into it while you heal up with some food. Wave 4 is a big mix though, we've got the bad boons, we've got some of these little flying dudes and we've got a much larger skeleton which is pretty tough. He will do a pretty big attack so make sure you're not in front of it as it can take up to half of your health. Focus on the smaller enemies first, take care of them as most of your NPCs will go for the bigger guy. And pay attention to your villagers as they're moving away, they'll always get out of the way of the skeleton doing his big main attack. Even when he's not doing his whirlwind attack, his normal swipe is pretty tough too, so make sure you've got plenty of food to eat, or just let your guys get on with it. As soon as you see him launch out, make sure you get out of the way. Eventually, if you wait on him enough, he should go down. It just takes a couple swipes of avoiding, but you should more or less get there, as long as you keep eating your cabbages, or make sure you've got plenty of maybe bread cooked as well. But soon enough, he's done, and we can go back to focusing on getting our village upgraded. When you've defeated him or got to character level 4, you'll unlock usually a stone axe. You may have got it a bit earlier, but definitely always make sure you go and craft one and give it to Malruf. He's the only one that can actually use the axe and it does a lot more damage than he's currently using with his uh, big stony club. Now before we do that though, we do have to face some of the spores. Now this is what happens, the cloud will go all pink, the spores will come in on a storm and it seems like that pastor has somehow triggered them. He does not seem to be a very good dude, I don't understand why we're keeping him around. Maybe these guys really need some tips on uh, working out stranger danger. But you can see these spores are going to spawn all around your farm and you can't do pretty much anything else but try and take them down. But you can't destroy them using your axe or weapons or anything else. You have to do it another way. All the rest of your villagers won't be able to move other than Malrafu kind of still follow you around. 
You can't pick them up, you can't bash them, you can't put a block in their place. All you can actually do is cover them and that's how you get rid of them. Pretty much start placing some blocks either side of him so that literally you cannot see him and if you have demolished the ground underneath make sure you've got one underneath him as well and as soon as you place the last block in front of him it should hopefully make him disappear. Obviously make sure it's a proper block and not a torch like I'm doing here. Likewise the same goes for the step, you do need to have a proper block, you can't use the steps either. But once you place the correct block, that's it, that's how you get rid of them. It will destroy any of the blocks pretty much next to it. It does mean you kind of mess up your build sometimes if you've gone a bit mad putting blocks down, but it is the only way to get rid of them. Do the same thing to all of the spores that are suddenly littering your farmyards and you should be able to get rid of them and move on to the next stage. I'm really hoping later on I can get some sort of weapon that will do this much quicker than going around and doing the blocks. Once cleared the skies will return mostly to normal and you can go about starting the next stage. And what a stage it's going to be, growing 250 crops. Now this will get you a lot of gratification points but you can get to the next base level without doing it and that's what I did here. I managed to grow maybe 169 but by the time I was finishing up this video I still needed a bunch of seeds and finding seeds in this game is one of the hardest things to do if you not really haven't been exploring and I would still say wait until the story kind of tells you to go and explore. If you run around to all the corners you might find some seeds but some of the seeds you do need a special companion and that companion is a special dog which I'm going to show you guys in a minute too. He will appear out of nowhere, I've called him Ratbag and you've pretty much just got to go and chase him as he leads you to some loot and eventually he's going to take you to sugarcane seeds. But his first port he'll stop at is another teleport stone at the furrow field bog. This is where you're going to find a bunch of them seeds as well as an important place to go and get some new recipes and hopefully buy some more seeds from some NPCs. You can also get some of the reeds here that will give you direct rope or twine and you're going to need a lot of these for some of them recipes later. Now you can take away some of these vines, they will do damage if you get too close and you can go ahead and use them as maybe defences or just for decoration around your base. There's all sorts of new mobs around here as well, most of the time I kind of avoid or run away from them knowing that there's a lot of tutorials still to get through, I kind of just wanted to hurry up and rush through it but some of them cloud ones will come for you and there are some vultures that can get a bit close and they're pretty deadly too. Keep following the dog and it will eventually lead you to these guys. Now these are eventually going to help you make things like a bakery and it might end up being a bit of a love interest too depending on what your character is. Go ahead and free her and then they'll go back to your village and then you can start another quest to hopefully find more of the cane seeds. You can also take all these decorative items with you as well if you want to build your own um, dungeon. When you get back to the village for delivering these guys to safety you will get some sugarcane seedlings. But the dog isn't your best friend yet, you have to actually sneak up behind him and pet him to make him your actual proper pet. Now while I've been doing all this I've had a bunch of my gratification points all sprouting around and I'm not sure if they do despawn but I noticed a couple of the hearts had some sort of little black tears in it or maybe it was just a graphical glitch but I definitely suggest you keep running around and making sure you're collecting them as they build. Obviously the more of these you've got the quicker you're going to level up your farm. One thing the game tells you is that once you start getting lots of fields your NPCs will take care of them all and if you're going around actually harvesting them all that ends up meaning that they have to work harder. So unless you particularly need a lot of certain resource or something generally leave some of them crops alone. I would say keep around at least 20 to 30 cabbages on you and 20 to 30 wheat because then you can go and trade them with other NPCs that you're going to find and I'm going to show you that a little bit later on. But the rest of the time then yeah go ahead and start planting as many of these seeds as possible because of that big number we need 250. Now I haven't covered them in super detail but we have been unlocking brand new recipes with every level up and most of it's cosmetic or build pieces and again if you want to spend the time decorating and building yourself a really nice farm you go ahead but I'm kind of rushing through because I want to see what else I can get up to once I've unlocked new materials. 
That said, some of this stuff is important so that your villagers will give you more gratification points. So make sure you build yourself some large tables, put lots of bowls in them and make sure there's plenty of chairs going around. Pretty much so you can feed everyone at one sitting if they wanted. These smaller bathtubs are going to be used in the bathtub build that I'm going to show you guys later on. But yeah, definitely make sure you put as many bowls out with food inside them as part of them sets so that the villagers will give you more gratification points. Next up we need more scarecrows as we start to grow sugar canes. But don't make the same mistake that I did so I'm going to walk you through how to avoid that. Now sadly I thought I'd hit on a big tip here that if you put the sugar field in without actually any water which is what you need to grow it, it would contribute to your amount and then you'd have to replant them again and it would still have that total. But nope, no cheat in here. So I've got my large field, I've got a fence around it and now I've just started to say I'm going to go and plant my sugar cane. So this is a mistake, I think you can't put water inside a fence post field. I ended up replacing all of these fences with some wooden blocks. Now let's follow the next objective and remember if any of these aren't popping up make sure you're speaking to all the NPCs and villagers and making sure that you have cleared any of their little missions. But we're back in the bogs with Ratbag our dog and of course Malruf and we come across some rats who are going to turn on us just for the jokes. So defeat these guys and they'll start explaining how the dog can sniff out some of the sugar canes. Once they're defeated, make sure you talk to the other ones as well. In fact, always talk to the side minions. They can sometimes give you clues about where to maybe go and explore or directly trade with them for seeds. So it's this point that your dog is going to sniff the sugar canes and run off to a sort of shallow part of the bog and you need to dig down where it's shining. Now you do have to be careful because in the deeper parts you can see hands creeping out, you may have to destroy them and they do pop out sometimes even when you're not even in the water. But dig here in the special spots only and you will pick up some more sugar cane actual seeds. Now the dog does also sniff out treasure too, so always go and make sure you get whatever's inside some of these chests and generally get more of the building materials as it's always nice and easy to grab some of this stuff. I never thought a humble cabbage seed would be treasure, but literally it's quite hard to get this big amount of seeds early. So yeah, any kind of seeds you can get hold of is going to contribute to that big huge 250. As you can see as well, we've got the wheat, we've got the cabbage and we've now got the sugar cane, but we do need two other variants and that will all be coming in another video showing you guys where the locations are of all of the seeds. You might come across this little NPC here as well, he just wants you to turn things into grass and this is how you learn the actual grass food from Mr. Wriggle. If you missed it from my first video, this is how you're going to change areas from horrible purple bog to nice planted green grass. Of course it's not that easy, you need to go and get the grass seeds and these are in the bogs with the hands, so defeating the hands gives you some of them grass seeds. Once back, go ahead and plant the seeds in the little squares and he will be a happy bunny and give you the recipe for the worm food so that you can then go ahead and craft it whenever you want. I presume I'll be able to cook with them eventually but I did find some crabs and they do drop some of their little pincers so I'm guessing yeah there will be something I can make with them in the future. You may have to run around the bog a good few times to get enough of the sugarcane seeds as the dog will kind of shout and bark but only after you've gone exploring around. Now you should notice on the map there's a little objective marker and another teleport stone so make sure you activate this on the cliff top cabin and be careful for these vultures they do hit pretty hard but you can pretty much run and ignore them for the most part. At the top outside this cabin you will find this guy and he knows the pastor the dudes that has been kind of kind of tricking you at your village. He has got some ideas for you though and he wants to give you some seeds but first you've got to do some irrigation for him. This is how you unlock the water bottomless pot so you can pretty much put water wherever and whenever you want. It's well worth going inside his house and demolishing a bunch of stuff just to see what it looks like and get some of these decorative pieces as well as some of them log pieces. You will be able to craft them usually with the next level up but I just thought it was worth it and a good idea and picking up some of these bags of wheat because he does want 50 wheat from you. Now to be honest I'm not sure if I had the wheat on me already or I did get it from them bags but yeah make sure you've got 50 wheat when you come to talk to him and also make sure you bring plenty of cabbages too. There is a bed up here as well so if it does become night time you can go ahead and rest. 
Also, you'll notice you've got these irrigation little doorways. Now, you can take these and you can make your own irrigation channels. It doesn't look like you need loads and loads of water for certain things just yet, but there might be bigger fields that you need to get water to, and it might just be quicker and easier to have a nice little river running through it or these tiny little canals. Make sure you destroy all of these crops because they can give you some more seeds. You could leave them here to grow, and I reckon that's the idea that you fill this blocks with water and let the water flow all through and eventually you'll have lots of seeds grown in this location but i still think there's nothing wrong in taking the seeds that you could get and to grow them back on your own actual farm now talk to him again and eventually he'll give you the pot and you can then go and use it he wants you to fill up at least two of these little canals or little ponds with water you can grab the water from one of the bogs down below and then bring it back up and then it's just filled with water permanently. All you have to do then is go ahead and just press LT and RT to drop it out. If you want to scoop it up you just simply press RT and it will scoop up all the water. Make sure you're holding the RT button when you want to pour the water. I had a bit of problem with this a little later on as I'd forgotten that I have to hold it properly. And yeah, don't do what I'm doing. It says bottomless water. You don't need to go and fill it up a second time. You can see it's already done, but I just wasn't paying enough attention. And I still went ahead and decided I'll try and chuck it in before realising the water had actually gone throughout all the areas. Once you spoke to him again, he'll give you the recipe for the sluice gate. And like I said, you can use these or grab the ones that are already around. Don't forget to also go inside and take any of the other stuff. I quite like these doors, so I decided I would take them with me too. And he's side minions. Make sure you speak to them. This is who you're going to transfer or swap out some cabbages to hopefully get some more seeds. Give him 10 cabbages and he'll give you some sugarcane seeds. That seems like a pretty fair deal considering I've got about 100 cabbages running around somewhere. The other rat also wants to get on in the action and he wants some wheat. So he'll give you some sugarcane if you give him 10 as well. Remember to highlight your item that you're giving and then that way that's how you give it to the rats or any other NPCs. And there you go, you just got given 5 sugar canes from him too. So back to the farm and it's time to do that revamp. Like I said, I ended up replacing the fence posts with a bunch of wooden blocks and then getting the water. Don't plant the plants first, make sure it's filled with water, otherwise you'll have to replant them again. They won't grow if you decide just to add some water afterwards. You can see my plants looking pretty worse for wear. They're all yellow and almost dead. And that's because I didn't actually grow the sugarcane in water first. So make sure you've got water in here. And it can be a bit tricky using the actual pot. As I mentioned, you've got to hold the RT button and it will fill up any space as long as it's all totally secure. If there's a little gap, the water will start sprinkling out. So be careful. So I went ahead and I pretty much broke all of these weeds and replanted them again. Also, don't forget to cook anything that you do end up getting. So sugar cane ends up making like sugar candies as well as some other stuff. And we did have an attack from lots of bugs here as well. There's quite a lot of them and it nearly got through to some of my stuff. I'm presuming they'll end up just eating or destroying your crops. So don't let that happen. Make sure you've got plenty of fences built around all of your fields. Eventually, when you've got it right, you'll see they're nice and sprout in and they're going to be grown very soon and hopefully getting towards that big number. So in the middle of getting my seeds and getting everything right, I was approached to start making a bathhouse. You can see I can make a small little bathtub and smaller mini little ones, but someone does want you to go and actually make a proper one for all the villagers so they're not stinking up the place. I do believe it's Brittany that likes to smell nice and clean and she'll give you the blueprint so you can start building the bathhouse. So either find a nice flat place or go ahead and build your place up so you can put the bathhouse down and we're gonna follow it to the letter to build our lovely bathhouse. So some NPCs don't care how you build certain structures that they want, but these blueprints do rely on having it perfect. So I've already crafted a actual bathtub that I've got, and you do need some of the smaller ones too. You'll also need some pots, and you'll need some ceramic little sconces. You can pretty much get all them resources by now if you've been playing exactly how I have. I don't know if there's any benefit to getting in a bath, but you can craft a bath towel that will give you some sort of defense score as well if you wanna run around in just your bath towel, be Eating up enemies. You'll also need a bunch of soft wood and you're going to need lots of the floorboards too. So replace the floors like it says with the floorboards. 
Remember also it will show you in your inventory what you've got out of all the items. You just need to press the back or select button to take a look at the blueprint properly. And when you're scrolling through the crafting options, it will pop up with the little blueprint sign colored red that you need to go ahead and craft some of them. And simply build up the walls exactly like it's saying, mixture of some of these floorboards as walls and then we're gonna have softwood on the other side. Place the sconces exactly where they're meant to be and you're also going to need a blanket door as well as some hand towels. Here you can see in the crafting menu it's gone from red blueprints to OK blue blueprints and that means obviously you've got enough in your inventory. So just go ahead and craft anything that's red and that's going to give you all the items you need for your actual blueprint build. Eventually you'll finish it off and get the last piece in and there you go you've got your bathhouse and the guests and all your villagers are going to start queuing up and they'll really appreciate that you're not making them smell as much. Time to grab them crops and we're so close to getting to level 3 now only just a few more gratification points. Just make sure you're always getting up early to get that bath ahead of everyone else. Now do you remember Saffron who we rescued much earlier? Well she is now going to become pretty useful. When you start making more items she's going to suggest that she can build you a bakery. She will tell you the ingredients you need and the items to place inside and yeah hopefully it means you can do it. Now it is a bit more freeform, it isn't an actual blueprint, you just need a chest, a sack of wheat, some free bonfires and a firewood and that's pretty much it or two stacks of firewood. And with that we've managed to level up, we're now going to be level 3 in 2 seconds once I go ahead and make some of these items ready for my bakery, maybe in the next episode. So there we go, we got there, it took me literally maybe 2 hours. Now I did far ass about a little bit doing a bit of decorations and setting things up nicely for my villagers so they all had food. But oh my god, it's a bit of a slog getting through some of this. I can see why some people have found it a little bit tough with Dragon Quest Builders. But I really think it's rewarding when you get through this. It is nice kind of getting that feeling that I really want to start building my own village and town. I just can't wait to start unlocking even more recipes and more items. And maybe take on some more dangerous bosses as I've not really been doing that much. I've not been really taking a lot of mobs as I've kind of been speeding through this kind of tutorial. But we unlock a bunch of new building pieces like the wooden vertical logs, bridges and some of them windows we saw in that little clifftop cabin. And yeah, just to demonstrate that, it will show you exactly how to grow stuff directly and get people to start planting seeds. When you click on Scarecrow, just make sure you've always got a chest nearby with the appropriate seeds. And that's it, you're done. Again, a big shout out to Square Enix for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys have found it useful. If you have, leave me a like. Go and check out the link in the description box. That will take you to the Steam page for Dragon Quest Builders. And obviously, don't forget, it is on Games Pass. So go and download it for free. You've got nothing to lose. And it's a great little crafting survival building game. If you're really enjoying these, I'll definitely do more. Sponsored or not, let me know. And I'll see you, Ratbags, for another survival game preview very soon.